welcome to the show. And once again, we have a fabulous lineup of guests to energize and inspire you. It's time to wake up your wow with your host, international award-winning speaker, Kath Vincent. On the show tonight, health researcher and best-selling author, Jason Sean Bennett, tells us how he cured his chronic illness with super simple principles from the world's oldest living people. We hear compelling evidence from hypnotherapist Dennis Law on how what you believe literally affects what you can achieve. And if you have too much work on your plate, virtual assistant Marion Jackson will tell you how to successfully outsource your never-ending to-do list. And in the Wild Records music slot, we hear from singer-songwriter, 17-year-old, Nicola Morrison. All this and more to wake up your wow. Jason, welcome. It's so great that you're here. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Now tell me, how did you get on this road to health? Well, it kind of goes back a long way, actually. I was born at seven months. My mum was prim, uh, you know, prim, and I came out at seven months. I was very unwell. I ended up with asthma and with hay fever and allergies and I, every cold and flu and bug that happened I was the sick kid you know yeah. I ended up with weight problems bad skin and acne uh, digestion issues you know I was really really unwell yeah. and I ended up on 16 shots of Ventolin every day oh for 20 God. years I was on Intel prevention steroid injections so I was really really unwell and so then I got to the age of 20 or so yeah. and I realized that I couldn't be helped I was told I was incurable nothing can be done take the drug son so I thought, well, I'll start looking at diet and lifestyle, and I had no idea. I mean, this was in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what to do. Yeah. So I started investigating fasting and uh, diet and lifestyle and centenarians, which are these incredible groups of people all over the world that live into their 100s oh. in better health than we are in our 70s yeah. without drugs or disease. You know, what, what are they doing? So I started investigating that. I started doing it myself. And after five years, I cured myself of everything. And now, almost 25 years later, I haven't had a bug, a cold, a flu, a virus, no drugs, nothing for 25 years. I never get sick. I'm never unwell. Wow. I'm in better shape now, almost 50, than I was in my 20s or 30s. So You're almost 50? Yes. And, yeah, my adult kids are in great shape. I've got a whole bunch of kids. I'm about to be a granddad, actually. Oh, my so God. So a little grandkid. Is yeah, this it's the youngest-looking granddad you know? you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's amazing. You know, so now, now I teach it. Yeah. I basically teach what I learned. And, and people basically come to me and say, look, what did you do yeah. to get well? And what is your secret and rah, rah, rah. So, okay, so let yeah. me ask you, what did you do to get well and what is your secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, goodness me, how long have we got? <laughs> well, I, I was lucky I had an amazing mentor, a 104-year-old grandmother, who back in 1930 at the age of 23 decided to stop eating all crap foods and rubbish and, and animal foods and become a strict vegetarian. And she was amazing and uh, she lived for another 81 years without drugs or disease. And, of course, she was being told regularly that, you know, well, what are you doing? You might get sick. And she goes, no, I'm good, I'm good. And she carried on. And, of course, all the experts around her died, and she carried on. And, you know, it's an amazing story. You know, she got Goes through all these doctors. Yeah, yeah, she went through all these people. And, you know, she was amazing. So she was a real mentor. Yeah. Um, and just really looking at what is it that human beings do that work, yeah. you know, that works for humans, and what is it that we do that makes us sick. And when you really start to look at these cultures, the Okinawa culture, the Nagano, Vilcabamba, Ibkazia, Loma Linda, you know, there's different cultures around the world. And when you really start to look at what they do, it's very fundamentally the same. There's 10 or 20 different things that they do that kind of cross over all the different boundaries of humanity. You know, they have, a, they have a culture, you know, they have some kind of faith or discipline. They eat a plant-based diet, so mostly plants, whole foods, you know, low levels of meat. They have a low alcohol. They don't smoke. You know, they, they get enough sleep, that kind of thing. So there's some fundamental truths about what they do. And what I now do is I teach that to people and I teach about what I did and how I got well and how I stay well. Yeah. And fasting is another one, you know, eating less and how is it to not eat for a day and what does that mean? So yeah. it's amazing. I, I find myself here without any realisation of how I got here, you know. It's, <laughs> real, it's great. It's fabulous though. So, so lots of fun. A lot of people would say, well, fasting, what, what? Don't eat for a day? Are you crazy? Yeah. Yeah, I discovered that in the 1980s and it was one of the first things I did because where your health comes from is your gut. It's your bowel and digestive system. This is everything. It's 90% of your immune system, which keeps you well. It's why I never get sick because I take care of my gut. And you your gut is basically where your microbes live and your bacteria. Yeah. And if you've got healthy bacteria, it's essentially a genetic material bacterial kind of mixture and your genetic expression happens there. And without getting too technical, yeah. what it means is what you eat fuels that garden and it feeds out how your genetics express. So whether you get sick or whether you get well. 
And we can look at the studies of identical twins. And there's, there's so many studies done of identical twins. So they're the same genetics, but one lives 30 years longer. But they're exactly the same, 23,688 genes. And when you look at that and you go, hmm, so they're the same genes, but one is outliving the other by 30 years with no drugs or disease. Yeah. How does that work? And you yeah. realize it's all diet and lifestyle. And so it's a fascinating thing. Fasting is one of those things where we've always had to fast. Because throughout history, there wasn't always a countdown or a, a supermarket or a BP or a fridge. And so before that was there, you know, we didn't have a choice. You, you basically ran out of food. You either died or you fasted. So we're actually built for fasting. What we're not built for is overeating. There's these key things that we can learn, and one of them is fasting again. And, you know, every one pound of body fat you have is 3,500 calories of fuel. So for most people, if you're carrying 10 pounds of body fat, you can stop eating for 20 days if you want to. And I've fasted 33 days at a time. I was on tour a couple of years ago, fasted for 33 days. While I was on tour, traveling around the world, presenting, Complete, you'd never know. I occur just the same as this. So once you start to master fasting over time, and it's something that does take time, it takes a bit of practice, but once you get it, it's incredibly freeing because yeah. you're kind of separated from the tyranny of food. And, you know, we've got this addictive food everywhere now, yeah. obesogenic environment where everyone's overeating and the wrong kind of food. Yeah. So we're in a real pickle in terms of the health of the nation. We're a real pickle. I feel really guilty now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. You can do something about it. The good thing is it's not your genetics. You know, 97% yes, like bowel yes. cancer. We've got the number one rates on planet Earth. It's hard breaking yeah. three to four times more people die every day than on the road of bowel cancer and it's rotting to death I've seen people do it it's horrible yeah. and when you look at that and you go well hang on 97% of that bowel cancer is preventable World Health Organization tells us this. so 97 out of every 100 people who rot to death they don't have to and yet we kind of stand by and let it happen it's yeah. disgraceful so there's a lot of work to do there's a lot of work but you can turn your health around really quickly so when you were on the path to turning your health around, yeah. what were the first simple things that you did? Ah, okay, changed what I ate in terms of my breakfast, lunch and dinner. So right. the first thing is, started to get present to what I'm eating. You know, yeah. What is it that I'm putting in my mouth? I used to think that, you know, fried eggs and, and you know, uh, and meat and, and, and hamburgers and pizzas and whatever and cola mm, drinks. And, yum. Yeah, I used to think that was <laughs> standard diet, you know, because... This was the 1980s when I started looking at this, and there wasn't the internet. There wasn't, you couldn't just Google stuff and learn. I literally had to try. I had to send for books from America, and I had to photocopy things. And, you know, the first thing I changed was what I ate, and that started to change my bowel motions. Yeah. And it was only when that started to happen, I started to realize that I was constipated chronically. Most people are, but we don't like to talk about it. Oh, you can know? we just talk about it really quickly, okay. quietly? Yeah. What are you supposed to be doing in the bowel department? In the bowel department, mm -hmm. three times a day. What? No pain, no strain, no grunt. Three times right? a day? Three, three, times, three a day. times a day. Yeah, so it should be just literally, oh, I feel like going. Go to the toilet. Oh, I've finished. It should be that kind of relationship. <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be the <laughs> kind of straining that a lot of people have. You know, and it's because we're eating and it's those four things. We have a meat-heavy, sugar-rich, highly processed, yeah. low-fiber diet. And it's the fiber that cleans out your digestive system. And on the way, cleans the fat from the liver, which is good for the skin, of course. To have good skin, you need you a healthy liver. Skin. Thank you. Well, I keep my liver clean, which yeah. is really important. And I used to have a lot of skin problems. I mean, for years, I had skin problems. And then that fibre works through the bowel, and it's the lack of fibre that's the crucial part with the bowel. And, you know, of course, we have chronic constipation, and we have the number one bowel rates, bowel cancer rates in the world. Is yeah. there a connection? Of course there is. Yeah. You know, if, you, if, if this part of the body is not cleaning and working well, you're in trouble. Mm. So what would your take-home tips be for someone who goes, oh, I really, I get it, I know it's... But it seems so hard. It does seem hard, doesn't it? Yeah, so take-home tips. Number one would be um, start to get present to what you eat for a start, particularly in the evening, because a lot of people get through the day and it's basically, you know, crawling through the day until they get to 10 o'clock and they can have their coffee and when they have their coffee, everything's going really well when I'm having my coffee. You know, that's just caffeine addiction, you know. Yeah. And then they go from there to sugar sweet, sugar sweet, sugar sweet, stay up late, you know, alcohol, fall asleep and repeat. Mm. You know, it's just, just the same old cycle, you know. <laughs> and, it, and, and you've got to intervene. So the first step, you know, and I teach this, this is what I do, this is what I teach people how to do. So the first step is to be aware of what you're doing and start to make small changes. Breakfast is the first thing. We've got a wonderful free muesli recipe on our website. You can download for nothing yeah. and that'll give you good high fiber good protein good pre-digested soaked superfoods you know so there's a lot of things you can do easily brilliant hey mm. thanks for all those tips number one go get your breakfast go to the website check out the recipe jason thank you so much for joining us today it's an absolute pleasure thanks for having me and joining us now is dennis law who has flown in from perth especially to talk to us about hypnosis Dan, thank you for making all that effort. You're welcome. Not a problem. Great to be here. Well, listen, how did you get into hypnotherapy? 
Oh, hypnotherapy is one of those things that I didn't really want to get into. But as part of a course of study I was doing, it was suggested that I should. Uh -huh. In fact, they gave me the books. So I went away and read them. And lo and behold, during that time, a person presented to me with a condition, post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. When he came and sat and talked to me, I'd read enough to say, do you know what? A timeline journey would be just fine for you. So a timeline journey. Timeline journey is something you do in a hypnotic state yeah. that goes back in history to whenever an event occurred. Okay. So firstly, just kind of unpick hypnosis for me, because I know a lot of people think hypnosis is, you know, stage hypnosis well, that they the see. Hypnosis is really quite simple. Yeah. It's all in the mind, isn't it? Are you hypnotizing me? I don't know, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be. <laughs> It's all in the mind. You create a condition that is relaxation, and that's all it is. Yeah. And if I was to suge suggest to you now that perhaps your eyes are getting a bit <laughs> tired and you want to blink, <laughs> and if you close your eyes, you'll feel perfectly fine, that's the start of hypnosis. But then there's two parts to it. There's the relaxation part, and then there's the communication with the unconscious mind. Right. In the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind's got the perfect health blueprint for you, for each one of us. And it carries all our memories, good, bad and indifferent. So if you've got bad memories that are holding you back and preventing you from breaking through to success, then we've got to go find those bad memories, take the emotions away from them, take the learnings and keep them, but certainly get rid of the emotion. And then you can, as I say, break through to success. So you have used hypnosis for conditions from, you mentioned uh, post-traumatic stress, yeah. through to success creation. Correct, success creation as well, because people like to have a goal. Your unconscious mind likes to have a goal. Where am I going? Yeah. And it says that's the destination, that's the journey that I'm going on. And you need to have various missions along the way. Yeah. You don't know the missions until you come across them but they, all those missions help you achieve what is your goal. Mm. So through a simple session, what, what should a person expect for, from a hypnosis session? What they put into it, basically. If you come and you allow the hypnotherapist to go in to find the things that are holding you back, and you allow them to come through with a positive outcome, yeah. then you will get a great outcome yourself. Okay, but nobody can kind of do hypnosis to you without your permission, can they? No. Right. And that, that's a misconception a lot, a lot of people have. Mm. They believe that a hypnosis has this great power, that he comes along and, you know, and people go, oh, I'm yeah. hypnosis. <laughs> Going to talk like but a chicken. Got, well, that's right. <laughs> but it, it's not the case. You yeah. cannot and will not do the things that you don't want to. Yeah. A therapist works with you. And one of the things I say to people, would you like to do hypnosis with me? Yeah. No. And if people say, yeah, off we go, and I facilitate a need. Yeah. That's what a good hypnosis, hypnotherapist does. They facilitate what it is you need. So literally, it's about repatterning any belief that might be holding you back. Correct. And, yeah. and so give me an example of the kind of breakthrough. You talked about breakthroughs. The breakthroughs that people can achieve, if you've got these negative emotions holding you back, no matter what they are, no matter how many they are, can you imagine how someone would feel getting rig, rid of all that negative baggage. So give me an example of the kinds of things people might say to themselves that you then want to change. I'm not worth anything. I can't do this. I can't do that. I will never amount to anything. I'll never have money. I'll never have wealth. Yeah. All that type of thing is a negative belief. Yeah. And quite often those things are quite deep down. People maybe don't realise that they... And that, that's the purpose of consulting with the unconscious mind, yeah. is you're taking those negative beliefs that are holding people back and Get rid of them, yeah. right? Drop your baggage. How are you going to feel? If you drop five, two five kilo bags of <laughs> potatoes, right, you're going to progress much, much quicker. Because everyone would, would fare better if they could get rid of that baggage. Oh, talking of baggage, right? You know I came from Perth. I do. And you, I've, flew I, in. you flew in today, I thank flew you. In. <laughs> and you know, my, my wife and I went to the shop and we bought a bag yes. with wheels. You know, we thought we'll trundle our stuff. Oh, yeah. And so I put it on the plane and I said, when will I see that? She said, when you arrive in Auckland. I said, great. <laughs> when I got off the plane, <laughs> right, this was going round on the baggage carousel. And I laughed as well. 
You know, the you first thought... time I saw it going around, I thought that's really funny, <laughs> especially when I saw the heavy label on it. Well, when I got that and I realised it was my bag, <laughs> I went and complained to the, to, the, to the lady at the counter, right? Like you would. Yeah, yeah, like you would. And she said, did you pack it yourself? And I said, yeah, I did. And it was delivered to me all the way, transferred. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of it is. I'm so have, you got, have you got no toothbrush or anything? No toothbrush, no nothing. We had to go and, and, and buy some of that stuff and shampoo and everything. Oh, yeah, the funny. whole lot. But look, it's an experience and, and that's so one of them. you have lost your baggage. I completely lost my baggage. I'm obviously going to be successful. <laughs> yeah. So apart from giving your baggage to the airline, yeah. how else can you get rid of your baggage? Right, by listening to what your therapist has to say to get rid of the baggage, to allow you to break through to your success. Yeah. Now, I know, Kath, you're having great success with what you're doing. I've been watching your show. Thank you. And I thought I would challenge you. Oh, no. Because the challenge is, would you like to break through to your success? I know what you're going to say. I've seen him do this. Yeah. And I thought, he's flying from Perth. He's not going to be able to bring everything he needs for this. Well, that made my bags really heavy, <laughs> let me tell you. But across the other side of the studio, we do have a couple of props oh, no. ready for you to break no, through, Kath. No, no. <laughs> you can do it, can't you? Yes, I can do it. I, you know, it's really interesting because I'd like to say to you, oh, I'm, yeah, super confident. I just feel a slight sweatiness in Good. my palms. Good. So, yeah, OK. OK. I'm in your capable hands. Walk this way. Board, you are so broken. <laughs> wow, that's good. That's determination. I love it. Now, what you want to do is get really close and put your left foot over here. Yeah. Right over, Kath. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, shuffle the whole thing to the right. Me? So that this shoulder, yeah. this arm, is directly over the centre of the board. Okay. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, just a little bit further this way. That's it. That's perfect. Okay. Now, just relax down. Okay. Relax down, relax down, like that. relax that. That's it. Beautiful. Okay, that pose, you keep that. And then all you've got to do is lift it up yeah. and bang, straight through to the other side of the board. Okay. You got it? Yeah, I think so. Right. That's good. Okay. That's a nice position. <laughs> right. So you say. So I say now look at the camera. Yeah. Look at the people. Count to three. Yeah. Right, and break it, baby. Break it. Oh, that's it. Go. Just break it. Yeah. Look at the camera. Look okay. at the camera. You've already got your target. Take aim. One, go. Beautiful. Oh well done. Oh my God. You did it. <laughs> right. And they said it couldn't be done. Keep that. <laughs> Kath, well done, that was awesome. I literally can't believe I just did that. No, anything that you put your mind to can be achieved, but you have to believe it. That is really powerful stuff. That is very powerful. I yeah. think in that moment, I've just really realised the difference between confidence and belief. Correct. And that's like confidence is kind of like, oh, well, I can front up and, you know, I'm a confident person, but I actually was quite nervous. Yeah. And then I just went, okay. So then tying back to the question you asked me before, yeah. how do you feel after doing something like that? I feel completely hyped. I you feel can, like yeah. I could just go out and do anything. Correct. And that, when you come to a session with me as a hypnotherapist, achieving your breakthrough, yeah. your personal breakthrough is as big as that. And that demonstrates the feeling that you should have after a session with me. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, hey, thanks for talking me through that. I... Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, and you don't even... <laughs> the board was broken before you hit it, I think. It's weird. I actually don't really remember what happened. No. I don't remember a point of impact. I just, yeah. Isn't that true with life? Often we achieve the breakthroughs in our life and until we're at the other side of that breakthrough, you don't know you've done it. Yeah. Thank you so much for um, flying all the way here, and for wrecking your luggage, for coaching me through a, a really huge breakthrough. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Kath. Um, and continue to bring on your wow. Well. Thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my God.
my god, I'm still <laughs> completely, completely <laughs> and I'm so excited that you're here, Marion. Marion, my virtual assistant. So tell me, what is a virtual assistant and how can that help get rid of your baggage? Okay. So a virtual assistant offers business support online. Um, it's kind of like having a personal assistant, um, they're, but they're not in your office. So they can pretty much do everything a personal assistant can do apart from the filing and making the coffee. Yes. And this is more common now with the age of technology, isn't it? Well, that's right. Um, a, you know, a virtual assistant works from their home and they can work with anyone throughout the world or New Zealand. Yeah. So you've had clients overseas, obviously. What, what kind of places are you working with? Um, I can work with people throughout New Zealand. I've got clients in Australia, the UK, Fiji and Switzerland. Mm, so you're really like going to Fiji without going there. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So that's nice that you can actually go all around the world without even leaving your home. Thanks for coming here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that because, you know, I'll be at a barbecue and um, people will, say, you know, you'll be chatting and someone will say, oh, what do you do? And I'll say, I'm a virtual assistant. And they go, oh, are you really here? <laughs> <laughs> she is here. She's right here. She's right here. So what kinds of organisations now typically hire a virtual assistant rather than a real person that comes into their office? Um, well, anybody can. Uh, anybody can work with a virtual assistant. I have clients that are authors, interior designers, builders, um, inventors, mm. TV celebrities, you know, mm. so, so, so long as you need business support, as so long as you want some business support, you can work with a virtual assistant. Yeah, brilliant. And actually, a lot of people, I think, in the past would have thought that they couldn't afford to hire a person, you know, and all the stuff that goes with that. What are the benefits of having a virtual person? Yeah, well, a virtual assistant works from their home office, so they're not in your office. Yeah. So they're not um, taking up office space, you're not having to provide them equipment, and you're not having to uh, pay for their holiday time or their sickness, you know, if they're unwell. So, you know, it works really well from, from that point of view. Yeah, so it would be a lot more cost effective, actually, than, than a conventional, old fashioned hire somebody. Oh, definitely. And, you know, you're not paying for them to spend time chatting around the water cooler either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, there, so it's, a, again, a very efficient way to, to hire. Um, so what would you say to someone who says, well, you know, that would be great, but how am I supposed to manage that person when I never meet them? Uh, well, if you're the kind of person, to be honest, that needs to know what your staff are doing every minute of every day, yeah. there's a good chance that you won't be able to work with a virtual assistant. Right. Uh, not everybody can, so if you're a micromanager, you know, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah, because really the point is... To trust and let go. Yeah, trust and let go. Oh, good business advice. <laughs> <laughs> and what other tips can you think of, practical tips about how you work with someone remotely? Um, well, the three tips that I would suggest, uh, firstly, is the rapport that you can that you need to have with your virtual assistant, right from that first phone call, right through to, you know, your first meeting, that banter that yeah. you have with each other. If, if you don't get on with them, then, you know, you're not going to be able to work with them. And it works both ways, you know. So um, this, uh, the second tip that I would offer would be to give a, your virtual assistant, your prospective virtual assistant, um, a, a small project to work on and see how that goes, you know, um, are they meeting the deadline that you set them and really the quality of work and again the communication, you know, yeah. did they keep you informed with the project? So try a small project first mm -hmm. and check that that goes well. Yep. That's good advice. And the third tip really is let them take care of the details, let go and uh, yeah, see how it goes. Yeah, that might be the trickiest bit for a lot of people, mm, wouldn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so consider it part of your professional development to be able to let go. <laughs> Thanks for those fabulous tips, Mary. Thank you, Kath. Thank you. So, Jesse, welcome back once again. Great to be here. Who's recording in the studio right now? In the studio right now, we have a singer-songwriter named Nicola Morrison. She's from Whangaparoa. And she's 17 years old. Really, really great songs. Really enjoy her voice and her style. She's got an incredible style. Well, let's hear from her. Let's do it. I flick through the pages. I held it in my hand. He said, I know everything changed. Best. I said, 
strangers But there is something there If we put down our cards He's all diamonds You're all hearts And I just got caught up somewhere in couldn't read the lines, they're blurry to me Like the difference between my dreams and reality Cause my memories are all that I see And I dig up on my pen to the page Try not to listen to what people say And instead I try to listen to the morning birds and the So right to remember And it helps to forget And I'll sing through September Won't let my mind drift back to where we met And the wind is always blowing away the my emotions changing like the weather Myself together, pick a different color and I find a blank page. Right about the guy who told me there's a reason for change. Right about the man from the old book stand with a pen in my hand, reaching in his hand like it was in my head. That's just a memory instead. There's no difference between my dreams and reality, cause my memories are all that I see. And the moral of the story is bittersweet. Tells of hearts and diamonds and books and you and me That was gorgeous, Nicola. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Jessie's right. That's a really interesting and unusual style. So tell me, what are you working on right now? Um, at the moment, I'm doing a lot of busking and playing at cafes and private parties and things like that, just trying to get my music out there a bit more. Yeah. Hey, if I was walking down the street and I saw you playing, I would just stop in my tracks. <laughs> Thank you. And you're doing some um, theatre and stuff as well, I understand? Uh, yeah, we have a school musical on at the moment. Um, we're doing Grease and I'm oh. playing Sandy, so that's a, quite a big task, yeah. It's a big role. So yeah. <laughs> fun for our college. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So you've uh, recorded two originals in the studio now, mm -hmm. and I believe we're going to do a few more. Yep, definitely. All right. So how many songs do you reckon you've written? Um, quite a lot. I've got a couple of books full now. I think since I was little, I've written about 80, 90 songs. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And where can we hear your music? Uh, I have a Facebook page up and running as of recently called Nicola Morrison Music, as well as a YouTube page which has all of my originals on it. Fantastic. Excellent. And what's the name of the YouTube channel? Nicola Morrison Music. Great. Nicola, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, thank you so much. My thanks to all my special guests, to Jason, to Den, to Marion, to Nicola, and our very own Jessie Wilde. And until next time, don't wait to wake up your wow. <laughs> I just, I, I literally can't believe I've just done that.